man, okay, okay, I, I, gotta, I gotta go to Canada, I need a, I need, need a, have my plan with uh, CJ there, and uh, okay, okay, my wallet, tablet, is it my battery full? Okay, okay, got that. Don't forget and your like, backpack and your suit! What the? Uh, so much for your Johnny yeah, table! Thanks, Uncle Ben! Oh my god, okay, okay. No, no, I'm not gonna. Mm, uh... Here we go. What do you have that stick for? Ah, oh, I found it on the ground. Oh, oh, my God! Oh my! Whoa! What is that, Spider-Man? No, I think that's Trench Coat Cookie Man. <laughs> There he is. I'll get you, you woody creature. <laughs> Trench coat cookie man, I'm gonna help you. <laughs> oh Jesus, dude, he knocked it. Get out of here, man. Get out of the way. I'm fat, come on. Hey guys, Big Red 589 here with Bazinga from Get Tech and Johnny Webb or Thwipper, Thwippin' Man. <laughs> Thwip Man. Thwip Man. So, uh, this was uh, supposed to be a day three uh, of uh, vacation <laughs> video, so but it's turned into a different type of video. This is going to turn into the return of Movie Madness Reviews. I haven't been to the movies in a while, we haven't done a reviews. Uh, Luckily for us, uh, yesterday on our second day, we had a bit of a good time in between to go see a movie. And we wanted to go see the movie that we've been waiting for because it's, we saw trailers and we wanted to see it. Yep. So we went to go see Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, there is going to be some details in this video that's going to give away some point, plot points to the film. So if you guys are afraid of any spoilers, please be free to go visit day one and day two of my vlogs, vacation, or any other video on my YouTube channel because I don't want to ruin it for you. But, you've been warned, Spidey's gonna whip some web at you and tell you to go away. Okay, so, we went to go see the movie, and it leads right off after Avengers Endgame. Um, right when the part where Peter Parker is basically mourning the death of Tony Stark, along with everyone else in the world. Yeah. And, and they kind of shoved that whole concept of mourning and Tony Stark in there. Yeah, it kind of bugged me. Yeah, it bugged a lot of people, I think. Because they started playing, oh, uh, was it Whitney Houston, I Will Always Love You? Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, oh, come on. Like, <laughs> stop it. So when they started playing that, I knew immediately they were going to do some kind of mourning situation when it came to Tony Stark. Now, it, they, what they try to do in this film, and, and I think they, they, they almost did it correctly, but they kind of like, they kind of just did it so quickly so no one would ask about it. They basically called it the blip. Yeah. And they basically wrote off anything and everything that happened and said, oh, yeah, people were getting age in the blip and the people were not at the right age. They went back to school, continued the same year. It was a cop out in my book. They, they could have figured some other kind of story with mm -hmm. that. Possibly. But they just wanted to get through it quick so they could continue the story of yeah. what they had. What would you thought of that? I agree with uh, Zing over here. Kinda. Yeah. I'm glad they didn't do so much on that. They just go ahead and just... It, it, it's kind of like what they did with Ant-Man. Yeah. With the... Oh, the, the road and hit the thing. Yeah, it, but... But it was it was quick. It was right to the point. It was done over with. And it, and it, it basically... Oh, it's... Like... it's uh, it, it takes point where they have Happy Hogan, who basically is trying to date Aunt May. Which is kind of weird, because Aunt May, if you think back to the evolution of Aunt May, the Spider-Man movies, she started really old. Yeah. And then she started to become a little, little younger... And now she's like in her 30s. <laughs> and being. Yeah, because the Aunt May on the Tony McGuire movie was. It was good. She looked just like the original. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. I, do, I don't know. I, I don't think. I can't say that the Aunt May is wrong. I think it, whatever works, works. I, I guess it's fine the way it is. But from there, it kind of leads right to where Peter Parker 
is being uh, um, talked to by Happy Hogan saying that Nick Fury needs to talk to him, that he wants to be part of the mission, wants to do certain to help out the, uh, the, uh, the, the team because the Avengers have been disbanded and they're not around anymore. And there's evil afoot. Like any other movie, evil is afoot. Mm -hmm. And Mysterio is is uh, the main person at start when you think he's he's think he's a good guy, which you'll find out later. We're gonna get to that point later. Um, what was your portrayal of like a wife after the blip? What do you think of that? I mean, do you think that they they we already talked about that? <laughs> Peter Parker at that point is basically on a plane trying to go over to uh, to another country or Europe or something like that for the summer vacation for, with the school. Yeah, Italy or whatever it is. Paris and, and, and European vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he basically finds out that Nick Fury is there, and he and he basically controls him. Oh, I'm gonna take. He goes. I don't want any part of this. I want to help you. I want to have my vacation. Don't bother me. Which is fine in Peter Parker's point of view because you gotta think from after Endgame. Tony Stark has just died, and Tony Stark played a huge role in his life because he's the one who gave him the Iron Spider suit. He's the one who basically was like a father figure to him throughout mm -hmm. the whole film. Yeah. And, and and it's like to basically have Nick Fury say, "Hey, we don't want you to sit here and mourn and do this. We need you back on the team. Come over here and do it." And it's like there's a mourning process. I think that that is kind of like, well, what it be, you know? Um. And then uh, from that point on, he basically it goes to the elementals and and Mysterio. And we don't want to give too many details on that because they, because I mean, it's obvious what's going to happen there. He meets Mysterio. Mysterio is flying around doing his thing. His little, little ho, 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 magic and stuff like that. I like came Doctor from Strange. I came from a different universe. I'm here to help. Yeah, just, that, that, just, he goes. Not too many spoilers. Yeah, we can tell spoilers. Oh, okay. Can I say something really quick? Go about ahead. That? Yep. See, right when I saw um, Mysterio flying around and shooting all these energy projectiles, I'm thinking, the crap? He doesn't have powers. He's an illusionist. Yeah. So I was like, okay, okay, something's up, something's up. Yeah, and I found it interesting when when they when they do when they did meet, the uh, water came down off my lip and went up my arm. That was raining. <laughs> That's an you illusion. Got water all over your beard there, um. <laughs> What I found interesting is that Mysterio did basically say, oh yeah, you're from Earth 616, and uh, I'm from Earth blah blah blah. I'm like, <laughs> I hear Johnny in the back, no. <laughs> what Earth? That's not a, what? No, he's like, no. Mm -hmm. I heard in the background, like, no, no, no. <laughs> nay, nay, nay. So you can tell that he was already lying right there. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are certain signs in the film that, that he's said that Mysterio is a bullshit artist, basically. Um, and then as you get further in, in, the, in the, uh, the timeline, it's in the film, you see that Nick Fury kind of takes over the, the field trip and they basically upgrade them. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, Jesus, I wish I got upgraded like that. Yeah. Sh shitty ass hotel to like something else. Wow. Now, I thought that the, 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 the way Hydro Man came into it, or it didn't come into it, however you want to look at it, I thought that was pretty cool. I thought Hydro Man was, was with, with the CGI for Hydro Man was pretty cool. Yeah, no, it, it, it was. supposed to be Hydro Man or just uh, Elemental? That's supposed to be Hydro Man. Is it? Yes, because if you remember in the storyline, like when they after Hydro Man, after that, you have uh, Flash Thompson, which I'm going to get to that point in a minute. Uh, Flash Thompson saying, like, oh yeah, he was in an experiment and then he turned into water. Like, he was talking about something like that. Oh. So that's Hydro Man. So you got Hydro Man and you got uh, Mol Molten Man, which was the main. Awesome. Yeah, Flash. Oh. We'll get right into that right now, actually. My biggest gripe when it comes to this Spider-Man franchise is Flash Thompson, all right? Flash Thompson is the geek. One of the geeks, the bully, the one that's always on the phone saying he's on social media. He's that's supposed to be a blonde jock who was dating Felicia Hardy back then, and then they totally freaking ruined the whole freaking they, thing. They it was like a big middle yeah. finger to me. Oh, sorry. I no, you're right, and that's why I'm pissed off about it. I do not like Flash Thompson. I do not like it. Like, it, he's supposed to be a bully. He's supposed to be, like, you know, like... Beating up Spider-Man, beating up Peter Parker, like like I'm gonna beat you up and blah blah blah. And no, he's just like, he's like, hey, what up, dickhead? I'm like, like <laughs> all right, you, you got the verbal abuse, but you know what? You know who did Flash Thompson correctly? You know who did it? Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man. Oh, they did it correctly. Mm -hmm. He was a bully, and then Peter uh, Peter Parker and Andrew Garfield basically put him in his place. So. The whole concept of Flash Thompson has pissed me off the past two movies, and this is why I don't like certain characters. Like, MJ, I can get used to. I understand MJ is a little different, looks different, acts different. I can understand it, all right? At least she's like MJ in some ways. 
Flash Thompson is not like Flash Thompson in any way. You agree? Go on. No. <laughs> agree? No. No. All it's right. Nothing like MJ. Okay. Now, from there, it basically leads to like the big fight where uh, he, uh, where Nick Fury basically yells at him, and then uh, uh, Mysterio basically says, I, I, "I'm sorry that happened to you, uh, and I'm, I'm going to help you because I believe in you, kid." And blah, blah, and it, all the up uplifting bullshit. And then uh, eventually, he he defeats the uh, Molten Man, and then he realizes later that he thinks that Mysterio is the Avenger everyone needs. He mm -hmm. is the next Iron Man. Yeah. Um, from there, and how to do that? What did he do? He gave him the glasses that Tony Stark gave uh, Peter Parker, which basically has uh, a th like almost a million drones up in space he can control with it with his mo with it with the glasses. And it's, it's basically the the last version of uh, yep. Jarvis. Yeah. Yep. And basically, that is those are the glasses he used in, in an Iron Man when um, he used it for um, to get the iron suits in Iron Man Three. Oh. Remember in Iron Man 3, all the Iron Man suits came flying by yeah. and he blew the, that, that was the glasses. Oh. Um, so here comes Wait the... It was? Yes. I remember the, the third one, he had the, the red... Nope, those are, shades. those are the glasses. Oh. And it was, her, what was it, Edith? Edith, yep. So, we get to the big point here and... and I did not like the abbreviation for that at all. No, barf. Uh, Edith? Edith. That's not barf. No, but the system was called Barf. Oh yeah, the system, yeah. The the um so Yeah, that was all Mysterio's uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. So when it comes to the, the big spoiler, you find out Mysterio is a bad guy. He's been planning this whole time. And this is where I don't like it. I don't like the, the origin for this, all right? Mm -hmm. They made Mysterio like he was part of the Avengers storyline since Iron Man One. Every character he's cool and in cahoots with was in Iron Man One, Iron Man Two, all the way up through Avengers. He wore he is with the whole st that's happened the whole time he was there. I do like how they had like the same actors for, yeah. for, for that through that whole thing. Yeah. But yeah, no, I don't even Although he had nothing to do with the Stark Industries whatsoever. Yeah. Well yeah, yeah. So Because guess what he did? Come on, anybody? He's an illusionist. Yeah, but you remember his job? What? That he did is of the Stark Industries? He was a uh, was he, he, a software he was engineer. Show stuff and everything, remember? Like oh, circuses and all that. Magician. Magic shows and yeah. yeah. So eventually, we find out that he's a bad guy. He's he's in cahoots, all that, and we find that out. Also, Peter Parker finds out because Mary Jane found the illusion tech that's used in one of the battles he had. So without going too detail on all the the battles, we're gonna get right towards the end of the film here because because it'll be a longer video if we go from here. <laughs> so basically, Peter Parker realizes all this. He gets he tells Mary Jane he's, he's Spider Man, and then from there he fights Mysterio and he gets what Whoa, was it? We skipped the whole freaking uh, costume machine. I'm getting that? to that. I'm getting to that point. Uh, See, so he he he, he, he he fights Mysterio and he has he's beaten down and he has to go to Nick Fury. He asks for help. Uh, not Nick Fury. Uh, Happy Hogan. Happy Hogan picks him up, lifts him up from his slumper, and then he says, "Go in the back, and make your suit." And this is where me and Johnny click because if you if you're a fan of Spider Man. You understand what this suit, this machine is. This machine he's using is comes from um, Reed Richards from the Fantastic Four and the and the series for the symbiote and how he's created. Spider-Man, Peter Parker, when he was in the the laboratory, he basically thought of everything he liked with with Eric around him, and he wanted to make a new suit, and that's what he did. They stole the idea from Reed Richards from the Fantastic Four. Right in the Secret Wars, um, back in the um, the eighties comic series, they had eight issues on that. Check that out. The real origin is Venom. I don't like how they're they're adding elements of other comic books that have nothing to do with Spider Man storyline and the Spider Man comic books into the movie. I don't like how they did that. Now it's a different point of view coming from this end over here because you're not a big comic book reader. Mm -hmm. But from this end over here, we reread the comic books and this is what set us off in the whole film and most of the time from a lot of other things. But this is a big thing that set me off. Well right? basically they're putting way too much from everything into into yeah. one series like the, like like you said he's too young for some of the things that actually exactly. happened in the comics and then he's too old for some of the other things yes it's all over the place i'm oh, sorry too uh the costume that he did too was supposed to be an upgraded version which was what you said similar right. to the uh the spectacular one right superior superior, superior one, all right. it's a crossbreed between superior spider-man and then the spider-man he is now 
If you take the symbol of the regular Spider-Man, like something like that he has now, right now, on him, put it onto the suit that he had yeah, in the film, the something similar to that. If you put something similar to that onto this, the suit he had in the movie, you would have the superior Spider-Man suit. But it don't. You have the new one, the small spider that's made out of nanotech or whatever it is, yeah. and, and it's weird. So in the another, end, another thing that's weird about it too is he's got gliders on that thing. Yeah. All right. There's only two two spider people that had the gliders. It wasn't Peter Parker. It was Miguel O'Hara, which was the 29 Spider-Man. All right, and it was also Spider Woman, the Julia Carpenter yep. one, not the Jessica Drew one. But I thought, like in the original comics, he had that. No, he had it under his arms because that was decoration when he was doing the wrestling. Oh, but it wasn't but there it, to help but him. There actual real what, it wasn't there to glide. It wasn't a glide suit. Oh, I see. Um, so in the end, what happens is basically the fight happens. He fights Mysterio. He gets Nick Fury understands what's going on. Happy Hogan helps out. Blah, 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 blah. All right. He eventually defeats Mysterio. Mysterio is fatally wounded. All right. And Can I throw this in really quick now? All right. While he was fighting the drones to get to Mysterio, all right, this was not Spidey sense he was using. This was this Ultra Instinct kind of thing that, uh, once again, 2099 Spider-Man had. Well, he can actually slow mo things in his mind and see where all the movements are oh, through sound waves. Mm -hmm. Peter Parker could not do that. That was one ability that Miguel had that Peter Parker did not. But what I think they're doing with that, though, is it's going to be an evolution of the spider sense. I think maybe from there it's evolution. Maybe in Spider-Man 3, when it comes out, it evolves to a spider sense. Maybe it's not just uh, an echo sound he hears. Maybe it goes to something different. But then again, I understand where you're coming from too. It's it's did not the same one. So he defeats Mysterio, fatally wounded, Dave saved, he's flying around with Mary Jane, end of the film, end credits. End credit scene number one was Peter Parker's down fly on Mary Jane. He lands on the pole. And then out pops in J. Jonah Jameson from Spider-Man 1. That actor, beautiful J. You Jonah Jameson. Raimi films. Yep. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. And it basically says the whole time he was facing Mysterio, it was recorded by Mysterio. Mysterio basically uploaded to somebody. And they gave out Peter Parker as Spider-Man mm -hmm. to the world. Which is where I got pissed because that's the one scene that made me angry because that's not supposed to happen in there in that time frame and that and when he's that young. It only happens in Civil War when he's doing the um the the Sokovian um accord accord thing. That's when he's like, Oh, I'm Spider Man. Pulls he, he goes No <laughs> I'm Spider Man. You know who I am. <laughs> yeah, that's when he does it. And then the second <laughs> end credit scene was you find out that Nick Fury and um the the chick he, he the, um Col I don't know, Col like Colby or whatever. Col yeah like the, her real name yeah that they're scrolls and Nick Fury is basically up in space while the scrolls are helping take care of the situation on Earth mm -hmm. after the Thanos incident mm -hmm. so that's the whole film on its own and now as a rating we're gonna get I'm gonna do this differently like I did before and Johnny this is the reason I'm doing it this way is for both for two types of reviews here okay. I'm gonna go from one review for you because how do you feel the film did period and what was your favorite part I thought it was pretty good you know like like you said I'm I don't read the comics but for from a just the, the cinematic universe standpoint uh, I give it a four out of five I enjoyed it my favorite part was the fake spider sense when he was fighting through the uh, the illusions, mm -hmm. the ultra, the, the, like all of those illusions, the ultra scenes were pretty cool. Thing that I talked about. <laughs> yeah, yeah th those were really cool. Like for the first scene where he was just getting his ass kicked, mm -hmm. like thrown out of a building. Boom! Oh, why am I now? Then it all forms up again. It was in the idea of how they they, they did the the illusions with the uh, the projection screens on yeah. that thing. It was a pretty cool idea. I don't even think that's possible because there's nothing to protect well, there, well, there's a story I'm going to show you but later. But I thought that was a pretty cool idea to make it realistic. It projects on the molecules in the air with all the moisture. Yeah. It's okay. very possible with nanotechnology. Yeah, it was a pretty cool idea that could be possible. So so he gives it a 4 out of 5. Now, from Johnny's I and I perspective here, we're going to give two different ratings. We're going to give it a comic book rating from a fan point from comic books. By comparison. Uh, and then we're gonna give a rating based off of just the movie, the movie just not going in as a mm -hmm. fan. So not going in as a fan, Tom Holland as Spider-Man is perfect. I think he does a really good Peter Parker. Mm -hmm. He's awkward, 
He's right to the point, and MS Spider-Man has been on point and on, on cue. It's perfect. And he does yeah. a lot of those moves. Yes, he's an acrobatic, actually. Yeah, he did yeah, ballet. Yeah. Yeah. So he's it's no stunt that. double. No stunt double for that. I would give the film, for that point of view, I would give that probably a four out of five. And my favorite scene was actually the illusions by Mysterio. I thought that was great. Now, coming from a comic book fan is where I draw the line here. When you add elements of a different comic book that don't belong to the Spider-Man comic book franchise and mix it into the comic book, into the, the MC universe, and then add elements that never happen until he's later and he's older, that's when the rating scale goes down. When you give it to that point of view, I say that the film gets a two and a half out of, out of, out of five. Wow. I really think that if it, it, the Homecoming was better compared to uh, Spider-Man Far From Home. I think if you try to put the, the, that together, you can't have Spider-Man be identity given at that at any point in that film at all. You can't do that yet. You can't have that. You have to have evolution of characters and villains in the film, the Sinister Six at least, to bring in the identity of Spider-Man to follow through with that. Because then it would lead to a bigger film if later in the movie, here's Sinister Six, we know it's Peter Parker. Now you don't have that element of surprise. You go, all right, now everyone knows who it is. The Sinister Six can be like, oh, we're just going to attack everyone he loves right now. Compared to where it's like, oh, we don't know who he is. He's Peter Parker. Oh, we have a weakness going from there. Yeah, everybody he knows. <laughs> Johnny. Way too soon on that. How would you rate it not being a fan of Spider-Man going into this as a film? Not as a fan? It was it was really good. I mean, they did good. And the CGI wasn't that cheesy this time. Mm. Uh, favorite part? My favorite part was when he went inside of the hologram while he was fighting off all the drones going, going back and forth while yep. he was tying them together. The reason why is because when I watched some of the animated series, it was very similar and his uh, just his movements, the way that he moved and everything was right on, was dead on. That was really good. Now what's your rating? And, and if you play the, uh, what was it, Shattered Dimensions was it? Yep. It was very similar when you fought Sea Man on there. Yep, I remember that. What's, that was really good. What's the rating for that? But the movie alone, uh, I would give it a three. I mean, it wasn't that bad. But then again, what he said, the whole identity thing was way too, way, way, way too early. Now, from a from a uh, comic book fan, Spider-Man fan, what would you give it rating? <laughs> Compared to the comics and everything, and all the elements that they just all tossed and mixed in, only twine with this freaking big middle finger to my face, I'll give that a two. So... The thing is, like I said, we can't, we were never going to have a perfect representation of any one of these films. And we're not going to come into this film just as a comic book fan and review it as that. We have to come in as a set alone, not being a fan, and then being a fan. And we have to give it both ratings. Yeah, it, it, I, I understand that they want to make their own universe. I understand that. But you're just trying to do so much all at once. Yeah. So it, if you don't want to stretch it out, just don't put it in. Exactly. So that's the thing with the, with the whole thing with the Spider-Man and any kind of Marvel film in general. So that has been the review of Spider-Man Far From Home. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. More videos to come. And hopefully we get some more Spider-Man films that are well worth it. And hopefully the uh, MC Universe does get better with this and doesn't lead to the, the direction that I thought it's going to lead. Where they just do off skew superheroes that mean nothing to us i don't want that mm -mm. yeah so this is a big one at 589 bazinga from get teched and johnny webb signing off whoa that's not the peter tingle no you can leave now that's my knee